Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at kind of a run-of-the-mill laptop. This is the Dell Inspiron 15 3567. Uh, this is not one of the machines that they heavily market to the masses, but it's something that comes in at a very reasonable price. And in the course of reviewing this laptop, we're going to look at why you might want to sometimes look for the boring stuff to get a good performance at a decent price because this one comes in at $348 and has an i3 processor built in. And as you'll see, it performs about the same as laptops that cost twice as much or more. And you can sometimes find yourself a pretty good deal by selecting something that isn't all that interesting. I do want to let you know, though, before we get into the review, in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and no one has reviewed what you're about to see before it was uploaded. Let's get into it. So let's take a closer look now at the hardware. This has a 15.6 inch display, but it is only running at 720p, which means that uh, things will be rather large on screen and the display isn't going to look all that great. It's certainly functional and usable, uh, but you will certainly see nicer displays out there on more expensive laptops. But when you're cutting costs, this is where you end up. Uh, this is what they call a TN display, so the viewing angles on it aren't great. So as you go off center here, the image will uh, change a bit and may not look as good to people sitting to the side of you. But uh, again, if you're looking for something basic, you'll get it here. This has an i3-7130 processor built in. It comes with 4 gigabytes of RAM, but you can upgrade the memory to 16 gigabytes, and they have one stick of RAM installed already. So you could buy another 4 gig stick, uh, bring it up to 8, uh, or you could buy two 8 gigabyte sticks and bring it up to 16. So you do have some options to expand it. It has 128 gigabytes of solid state storage built in, so it does feel pretty responsive when you're uh, switching, switching between applications and that kind of thing. And if you need more space, it is just a standard SATA hard drive, so you can go out and buy a relatively inexpensive 500 gigabyte SSD, for example, and pop it in here, or uh, go with a spinning hard drive and get a couple of terabytes for not that much money. I did find it was a bit difficult to take the thing apart. You have to unscrew all the screws on the bottom here and then uh, take the keyboard out remove more screws so they really don't want you poking around inside of here but if you are not afraid of that you can easily upgrade it and get yourself a little bit more memory and storage if needed so that's a good thing uh, no graphics processor on here so it's probably not going to be great for gaming but you do have the intel graphics built in and if you do add in another stick of ram the onboard graphics will perform better than what you're about to see in this review because dual channel memory actually makes the graphics side of these Intel chips run at a faster rate. I will take a look at the ports on here and see what we got. So we have a gigabit ethernet here. This is an air vent for its fan. It really isn't that loud either. I was surprised by how quiet the fan was on this. You have an HDMI output for connecting an external display. Uh, even though this has just a uh, 720p display, you could get a 4K or 1080p image out of that HDMI port, and it's a full-size one, so you can plug it right into your television. Two USB 3 ports over here. On the other side, uh, we've got a uh, SD card slot here, so you can pop in your camera cards and whatnot. Headphone, microphone, combo jack here, a USB 2.0 port here, and something you don't see on a lot of more expensive laptops, an optical drive. This is a DVD and CD reader and burner, so you can burn discs and read them on here. And then right here, you've got a Kensington lock slot on it. On the bottom, you've got stereo speakers. It doesn't sound great, but you got them, and you get some somewhat decent stereo separation on it, so that's not such a bad thing. Uh, the keyboard is kind of the standard Inspiron layout. They're a little smaller than what you might see on other computers, but the spacing on them is good enough that I'm able to type pretty comfortably on it. It does remind me a lot of the more expensive Inspiron 15 and 13 keyboards, but it doesn't have the backlighting or any of the other fancy accoutrements here. It's going to be uh, dark when you are uh, driving around in the night with it or flying around in the night with it. Uh, the power button is here. That doesn't even light up either, so uh, you do have to kind of rely on the screen being on to know when the computer is uh, operating there. You do get a number pad here though, so if you are doing some number crunching, you can do that easily on this. And uh, the trackpad isn't bad. It's a little springy, it's a little plasticky, but uh, it does get the job done and it's got you know multi-touch on it and whatnot and uh, all in, not a bad trackpad. Doesn't feel as high quality as what you might get on the more expensive 15-inch devices, but for a cheap laptop, the 
uh, trackpad here isn't too bad at all. Now, one thing that you don't get with a laptop at this price point is something thin and light. Uh, this thing is thick and heavy, 4.9 pounds or 2.2 kilograms. Uh, it's all plastic here, so no fancy magnesium or any kind of special casing here. It is just plastic, and I'm not sure how well it'll survive some falls, but it does have just a solid-state drive in it, uh, so you don't have to worry as much about data loss, perhaps, if you do happen to drop it. The battery is replaceable. You can just snap it out here and slap in another one, so that's kind of a nice thing that you don't see on those expensive thin Ultra books. Very easy to uh, carry an extra battery around and swap it out if you need to. Battery life on it isn't bad. I'm getting about six and a half to seven hours doing kind of basic stuff with it, which is very good. Uh, these Intel chips have gotten a lot better with power management over the years, and that certainly benefits uh, this end of the market here. So. Uh, I was surprised actually for the low price to get uh, almost a full day of usage out of it, which is again kind of unusual at a low end price tag here. And of course you can just keep an extra battery with you if you want to uh, get a little bit more than that. Uh, it has AC wireless built in in addition to that gigabit ethernet, so you should have decent performance while browsing the web and all in, I think a pretty good value given what they've packed into it, even though it doesn't have a very nice display to look at. Let's take a look now and see how it performs. So let's begin with some web browsing. We've got my YouTube channel running with a 1080p 60 video at 60 frames per second, and you can see uh, we've had no drop frames there. Everything is playing back as expected. We also took a look at nasa.gov, the website. That came up very quickly and responsively, something I've seen on other i3 processors. So this thing seems to be performing where I would expect it to. And we also ran the browserbench.org speedometer test in Google Chrome. And there we got a score of 109, which puts it right in line with some more expensive devices we looked at recently with a similar i3 processor from Lenovo. Uh, so it really is performing quite well for considerably less money. In fact, uh, the chip in here is clocked slightly higher than the chip we looked at on those other i3-based laptops from the same generation of Intel processors. So all in, we're getting very good performance here for under 400 bucks, at least for basic tasks. We also ran Microsoft Word and found that it could do all of your basic office tasks very well and effectively too. So for a you know, basic transportation workhorse, this thing seems to be doing pretty well for the price. So let's move on to some gaming now. We've got Minecraft running here at around 100 to 164 frames per second, give or take. And sometimes we'd see a little bit of a dip when we got into more dense areas. Uh, this is the Java version of Minecraft, the one that most people run with the Optifine performance enhancing plugin installed. Uh, so not bad there. Uh, we also ran Rocket League and saw frame rates at around uh, 30 frames per second or so at 720p with all the settings turned down. We would typically see this performance at 1080p on one of these chips, which means we're kind of running a little below the potential here. And the reason is, is that there is not a second stick of RAM installed on the laptop. So if you put another stick of RAM in, you'll see a boost in performance for games like Rocket League that uh, really push the GPU that's built into that Intel chip. So put that other stick in, you'll get a slightly better gaming performance, but it certainly will not come close to rivaling even a low-end gaming laptop that has its own uh, discrete graphics processor inside. We also ran the 3D Mark CloudGate test, and there we got a score of 5,098 which is very, very good for what we're paying here and on par with some of the competing devices uh, running with those similar i3 processors. So I've been, again, just very pleased with the overall performance here uh, for the price point for gaming and for general tasks as well. And again, just remember that you're not going to be doing a lot of high-end gaming on here, but a lot of lower-end stuff should run fine. And of course, it'll do a little bit better if you stick that extra stick of RAM in it. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a score of 98.8%, which is a passing grade, and we were quite pleased with how well uh, the machine kept itself cool, which is not something you always see with a thin and light laptop that doesn't have a lot of room to move air around. Uh, this one certainly has quite a bit here. You can see uh, just how big that air vent there is on the side, and it's got uh, plenty of room to get the air moving and keep that processor cool. So this means that if you put it under load, like doing some video editing or some kind of light engineering work or something, uh, you likely will not see it get too hot, and it will also not slow down the hotter it gets, which is typically how these processors keep themselves cool. If they can't get the heat away, uh, they run slower, so they generate less heat, and this one seems to be 
uh, keeping itself very cool. And as I mentioned, the fan is not all that loud either. And we also like to stress it out on media playback. You can see Cody running here with the Jellyfish test file, 140 megabits per second, 10-bit HEVC, and it is playing it back with no drop frames whatsoever. So great media performance here at 720p. Uh, this would also give you similar performance plugged into a larger television at a higher resolution because these chips have the ability to decode some of this high-end video in hardware. So all in, we're seeing this thing perform as expected. And in many cases, it performs the same or better than laptops that cost twice as much or more. Uh, the big sacrifice here is that you get a pretty ugly casing that is big and heavy with a not so great display. But if all you need is performance, sometimes you can spend just a little bit of money and get uh, the luxury level performance here in a uh, economy package, which this really is if you were to maybe compare this to the auto industry, for example. And most major manufacturers make laptops like this that are big, ugly, but uh, perform well. So definitely do some shopping and uh, take a look at what might be out there before you drop money on that fancy Ultrabook because if you don't need all those nice Ultrabook hardware features, I think you're going to get by just fine with a pretty big engine in a economy casing. Until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including gold level supporters of the Black Eyed and Blues Music Hour podcast, Chris Allegretta and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.